What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. I've got a bit of a different video for you today. Um, I'm going to be doing the update on the Transporter T7 front. Some new information has just been dropped. So I'm going to put it all together in one big video and I'm going to be updating this video at a later date. So if you haven't already, please subscribe because when more information comes out, I'll be getting an updated video out. So hit that bell icon as well so you get informed when it comes. Everything what I'm covering in this video is going to be the stuff what I believe to be genuine. Obviously, there's loads of fake information out there. Everything what I'm including in this video today is hopefully going to be stuff that you agree with in the sense that I'm taking information from reputable sources, reputable images. It would be so easy to fill this video with bogus stuff, but I'm only going to put the stuff in there that I, I genuinely believe is going to come to fruition in the future. If you want to see where I've got some of the information from, rather than tagging it in every single picture i'll just put the links below for where i've got the images from and so also some of the information from so without further ado let's get straight to it first of all i want to get into the chassis so there's quite a big change coming with a chassis on the t7 platform and basically we're going to be moving it to an mqb platform which um, this is a, a german word in essence it means it's a modular platform most vw scored uh, vag platforms are using this sort of modular design now so it's moving from the fact that before it was a van that then turned into a minivan and a combi whereas now it's going to be primarily a minivan and if they do decide to do a van version of it then that'll be derived from the minivan rather than the other way around so it's going to be much more car like much more modular which means as a result of it a lot of stuff is going to be easy to retrofit so for the people that are modifying them out there retrofitting stuff in the future your like um, mmi systems or ami or, or whatever platform you're going to take the multimedia system from it should be easier to retrofit the electronics should be quite similar to adjust and, and long code stuff through vagcom and that sort of stuff so moving to that platform it is a bit of a game changer for the modifying scene but it'll take us a while to adjust but i think at, at the end of it you're going to have a much more much more diverse platform that you're going to have much better mods on and much more quality mods because we're going to be able to reuse existing stuff what's out on existing vehicles so i would imagine there's going to be a short wheelbase and a long wheelbase the body types are probably going to be mainly restricted to probably the combat and the multivan now i've heard rumors that the t6.1 is going to be the continuation of the van side of it so if you're interested in a panel van the t6.1 is still going to be that choice for you whereas a t7 this potential that it's not going to come out as a van at all that's something you might want to consider if you're waiting out on buying the t7 rather than the t6.1 i mean it's, it's not set in stone yet either but looking at some of these renders what you've got coming up on the screen now it is definitely more shaped towards that minivan styling as such. That being said, it, it, it's got a, it's got a bit of a Citroen look in my opinion. I don't know if you agree with that, but just the way this nose comes out and the way that it's, it's, it's much better streamlined. Um, for me, when I first saw these images, if it wasn't leaked as a VW T7 and some of the images have also got VW badges on, I, I wouldn't have called that it were a Volkswagen. The wheels were a big giveaway from my point of view. Um, the wheels were very, very Volkswagen-esque, but the rest of the vehicle, it, um, it definitely has that Citroen style into it. So as I've already gone through, it's got that longer nose, which indicates what sort of drivetrain we're gonna have in this vehicle. It's got a much more streamlined windscreen and the rear body seems to drop down a little bit of the rear, which which adds to that evidence that it's probably not gonna be a van because the idea of getting the van is to have it real nice and boxy so you can stack stuff high in the back, but dropping the rear down is gonna, is gonna cut into that volume. Whether that's a trade-off for you know, more efficiency, rising it through those efficiency ranks to get more mile per gallon to fit into the better categories. I don't know. It, it, it like I say, it could, it could still be released as a van, but the evidence is pointing that it's not going to be at this moment. The DRLs in the front, they're very lime-like. I'm not sure whether these are production ones or just been put in there in the mule just so they can have some lights in there. But they're like a straight line. They haven't gone for these these funky little angles. What they've been doing on the more recent models. And it, it does appear that we've got integrated wing mirror signals, so there's going to be nothing on the front wings there. So it's definitely pushing towards that car-like feel. To be fair, I'm not a, a massive fan of it right now, but I weren't a big fan of the T6 and that overbiting Sportline bumper when that first came out, and, and now, lo and behold, I own one. So... I think stuff like this does grow on you. One major thing I've noticed is that A pillar is massive. And some of the images, it's, it's covered up with um, the wrap what they put on to uh, pre-production vehicles. 
just to stop you from seeing what, what, what it looks like or to make it harder for someone to make a render from it. Now, that A pillar is so huge and some of the other vehicles have got windows in there and I think for sure that is definitely going to have a window in there because if, if that didn't have a window, there'd be such a blind spot on that A pillar. So then going into some of the interior then, we've had one real image leaked of the interior. The rest of them are from mule vehicles which share the interior from the T6. And what I mean by a mule vehicle is that they sometimes make a component, they'll adapt it to an older vehicle so they can road test that component and, and these are all considered mule vehicles. They'll go through various iterations of mule vehicle before they decide to construct the full vehicle. So a lot of the interior shots what we've got are coming straight from the interior of the T6. So quite a good few months ago now someone leaked a big article saying we've got the interior of the T7 but it, it was exactly the same as the T6 and I can guarantee it's not going to be exactly the same as the T6. And the way that things are going at the moment, we are definitely going to be getting a lot more techie stuff in these interiors. Even the T6.1 right now has got some absolutely amazing upgrades over the previous model. So the way that we're pushing in the T7, I'm expecting some quite good things. That being said, this leaked image, I don't know, I'd, I'd like maybe some of your guys' opinion on it as well. This leaked image could very easily be mistaken for a T6.1. So maybe this recently leaked image is still a mule, it's still running the incorrect dash, but a good standard for us to go by is uh, the new score is what has been released. Um, the new scores have been released with quite a, a new multimedia integration system. And I personally believe that that's the sort of stuff that's gonna be coming across the bag line. So that'd be a good standard to set for everything else. So then moving off interior, I think probably the most important one and the biggest change for what we'd expect going into the future is the running gear of it. Now, for sure, we're going to be getting a hybrid. The reason why I say for sure is because on the recent images that have been spotted going around the Nürburgring, there has been two filler caps, one for the plug-in and one for the fuel. So I think for sure we're getting a hybrid. And looking, now this is where I'm a bit torn between posts, looking at the way that this wrap has gone over the vehicle, there's not much ventilation in some of these, in some of these vehicles which would indicate towards either a hybrid or a full electric. But the full electric is probably being saved up for the ID buzz. I don't think they're gonna be putting full electric on this because it's, it's just gonna create a competition that they don't, they don't really wanna get involved in. They've pushed a lot of finances towards the ID buzz. The ID buzz has been shaped in such a way that it facilitates an electric motor and the battery's going in the base. Whereas this vehicle, the nose has been stretched out to, to facilitate different sorts of engines because it's that modular platform, it's gonna be able to take all these different types of engines, which is why that nose has probably been stretched out a little bit. So we probably are gonna get varied, varied styles and sorts of engines. I think hybrid for sure. This one's got a pollution sticker on, that's one of Germany's pollution stickers. If you were mistaken thinking, is it just a Euro 4? Absolutely not. In Germany, the, hi the highest grade of, uh, or the best pollution standard you can get at the moment is for and that basically means anything Euro 6. So I think you'd be mad to think that it's not going to at least reach the standard of Euro 6, considering that we had Euro 6 on T6s. But yeah, don't, don't be mistaken by that for that, that does mean Euro 6. It's the highest standard you can get to in Germany. I think there's going to be a much bigger push on the TSI engines as well, as a result of recent emission changes. Maybe diesel engines have been put on the back burner a little bit. For sure, when I was buying mine a couple of years ago, I quite wanted a TSI, but there just wasn't that many used out there. But the, the push at that time was to get a TSI engine and not have the regret of having a TDI when in future you could potentially be getting band zones for diesel engines or low emission zone. And the final one is there's a rumor that it'll be running the Golf drivetrain. Now I'm not sure entirely how this will work, but if it's running off this MQB platform, maybe quite a lot of these platforms run a golf drivetrain. I'm not sure how that'll work with the extra weight, but there's there's been a rumor come out of Germany, some of the reviewers what I've found in Germany, and this has all been very, very loosely translated. I'm not fluent in German, but yeah, I, I definitely picked up from some of those interviews and some of those, some of those videos what have been released in Germany that it's definitely gonna be, well, not definitely rumored to have a golf drivetrain. I think that might be more focused at the hybrid side of it because the Golf, the e-tron and all that sort of stuff is uh, is running a very similar drivetrain. So I hope I've covered some questions what you had and, and I've, I've really enjoyed making this video because I've been quite interested in the T7 for a while now since a lot of these pictures and images started circulating. Um, a lot of them are bogus, like I say, but I've tried to put together the majority of the ones that I believe are genuine. Let me know what you think as well. I'm definitely not set on the styling for now. I've, I've included a few renders in here as well. The renders are basically what people have seen 
the prototypes going around and they've created a render from it. Far more skill than I have to create a render. So I've, I've definitely not done these myself, but I, th I feel like the renders look pretty accurate to some of the lines, what you can see in the vehicle. It looks better than with the prototype tape on, of course, but it still doesn't scream out to me as a nice looking van. But maybe it'll grow on us. Um, but let me know what you think. I'd be interested to know what the community thinks about this new vehicle. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you haven't already, do subscribe. I'm doing these videos twice a week now. And if you are interested in, in VAG sort of stuff, your Volkswagen, Audi group, that sort of stuff, I'm your man for it. It's, it's, a, it's a passion of mine. So definitely tune in for some more videos and catch you later, guys.